Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to an old-timey classic, uh, Civil War Generals 2, a classic war game from the 1990s, a turn-based uh, Civil War game that allows you to fight through many of the historical battles of the American Civil War. And in many ways, I see a lot of uh, inspiration that I think was drawn from this game in Ultimate General Civil War. Uh, the management sort of phase of, of upgrading your unit's weapons, uh, the way that the campaign works in terms of branching, but only slightly variant uh, of historical battles. There's just a lot in here that makes you think, you know, there's a lot of similarities between Ultimate General Civil War and Civil War Generals 2 in some ways. Uh, in other ways, it seems like it's inspired by Sid Meier's Gettysburg, and in other ways, it's just somewhat unique, unique and new. Um, with that being said, this is one of my all-time favorite games and is a classic uh, from my childhood. And since today is Thursday, I don't know if, I don't think this is really a thing anymore, but there used to be something that people would tweet a lot about on Twitter uh, called Throwback Thursdays. I think that was it. Um, I may be showing my age here a bit. But um, nonetheless, uh, I guess that's what we're doing. We're playing Classical Game Thursdays. Uh, Battle of Bull Run. So in our first video about a week ago, we played through the Battle of Blackburn Ford, which is the precursor to the Battle of Bull Run. Historically, it was a minor skirmish between the Confederates and the Union forces uh, just before the Battle of Bull Run. Uh, it was indecisive, uh, although both sides claimed a major victory. In our case, we won a major victory, inflicting over 6,000 casualties on the Union Army. That would have been almost one-sixth of the Union force. If they didn't withdraw just out of hand, then they certainly would have withdrawn toward the city of Centerville, uh, which is an important road junction just north of the Bull Run Creek. And this battle is following this campaign uh, and is saying basically that we're fighting an alternate version of Bull Run. This is one of the most substantial different uh, battles. In other words, uh, this battle differs from the historical battle probably more than any other battle in the campaign from an alternate perspective that I can think of. And this is the Siege of Centerville. So no longer are the Union on the attack, no longer are the Confederates waiting behind the Bull Run Creek. Instead, the Union have uh, withdrawn towards Centerville. General Longstreet, under the Confederate uh, forces, is ordered to pursue and attack the fleeing Union at Centerville. Uh, the Union forces need to fight a delaying action until reinforcements can arrive. Uh, they do have heavily dug-in positions near Centerville, and um, that's the situation. Uh, the Rebels might have a slight advantage early, but not really because of the way the battle deploys. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the battle. Now, this battle starts off with the Confederates having two columns of forces. If we zoom out here, we'll see there is a large body of forces here to the left of Club Run. Uh, and then there is a body of forces to the right of Club Run, just north of Blackburn's Ford and Mitchell's Ford. So there's these two columns and there's these two roads that they can advance upon to advance on Centerville. Centerville is up here on the extreme right, uh, sort of up near the top of the map. And you can see how a bunch of roads all converge in it. Um, you can see there's a bunch of Union victory points here, although again, because of the way victory points in this game work, it doesn't matter all that much. But essentially the Confederate columns are set up to do two things. One of these columns here in the south can advance along the main roadway. You can see this is kind of a thick roadway as opposed to this is a little bit more of a string beam roadway. This is like a wagon rut. This is like a, a, a pulverized stone road, so this is a really good quality road. It's a pike. So these troops can advance along this really good road towards Centerville from the south, brushing aside any forces that they meet on their way. And then this sort of left bank force here over here, uh, with a couple of the larger brigades, can swing left over the river, over the, the creek here, uh, and potentially flank the Union, attacking Centerville from the west. In theory, that's the way the battle could set up. Now one thing I do know is about this battle is that um, this game uh, does not necessarily uh, set you up in a good position in this battle. The Union is supposed to be on the retreat, it's supposed to be a rear guard action, and there's like one or two units that are actually set up for that, but if you split your forces in this battle, you're going to get dealt a pretty rough lesson, so we're actually not going to do that, we're going to ignore that, we're going to move this artillery here, and we're just going to move as one unified body. Uh, I'm not going to divide my forces, I'm not going to be bold like Robert E. Lee, and I'm going to pursue a much more uh, cautious strategy here uh, in order to ensure that I keep my force strong. If I keep my forces concentrated, I've got a much better chance in this battle of dealing the enemy a blow. So we've moved these forces to the west of Club Run over to the east of the river. Uh, they've crossed this ford here, and they're linking up with these other troops that are about to move north. 
Meanwhile, we're going to move uh, RCW Radford's Cavalry Brigade uh, forward uh, in order to scout the positions. And we can see here they detected an enemy sharpshooter uh, regiment. So sharpshooters are a new type of unit that we didn't see in the first battle. And what these are, are basically marksmen with really good weapons, the sharps two trigger. It's a breech loading weapon. It's a very accurate weapon. Unlike the muzzle loaders, it's a little bit faster. It has more of a prepared cartridge and it is very deadly. This is a very small unit, only 117 men. These are troops that fight in loose formations. They're easy to push back. They're easy to overwhelm, but they can actually do quite a bit of damage if they attack you um, be, without you being able to really respond. They are uh, skirmishers in the finest degree, but they're also sharpshooters uh, that will do quite a bit of damage. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start moving some of our forces forward. And then we're going to immediately switch them into line formation because I don't like the odds that, that I would face uh, if the enemy uh, sharpshooters do deploy against me. So we're going to go ahead and we're moving these troops forward, moving the two troops on the right into uh, battle line formation. The troops on the left will not because it's unlikely the Union can get to them. And then we're going to move this one brigade, Holm, uh, Holmes Brigade, through the woods toward the sharpshooters as well. Uh, additionally, we're going to move uh, Jones's Brigade, which is currently defending Black Room Ford, kind of like a rear guard unit. We're going to move it into column and move it north to join the other forces. And that's going to do it for our first turn, so let's go ahead and jump in. This is an overnight battle, so you can see there's 48 turns. I think a battle usually consists of about 24 turns. Um, so this is an overnight battle. Uh, it can be a two-day fight. It doesn't have to be, uh, but it can be a two-day fight. Um, okay, so... Do we not have the date and time displayed? That seems kind of weird. Huh. I no, mean, I can, I can see it when I go into the, the command tent, I think, somewhere. Yeah. No, I can't. I can't even see the time! It shows it somewhere, I swear, but... Uh, in any event... We'll uh, kind of continue moving our troops into position. It looks like the American skirmishers or the Union skirmishers didn't do much. We did get Richard Yule's brigade to come up, so another brigade of reinforcements uh, came up to join the party. Our artillery here can hit the enemy skirmishers, so we will do that. Uh, didn't do much damage. Loose formation troops against artillery, not necessarily the most effective uh, weapon to fight them with. We're going to move our infantry forward. Now we know that the enemy will probably... Um, you know, give them a bit of a bloody nose, but that's fine. Uh, we'll also move our cavalry over here onto the flank, and we'll see if they're compelled to withdraw or not. Um, so we've kind of started to surround them. That's the objective here. We're going to move this other cavalry brigade forward. So they may choose to attack, uh, in which case we can probably surround and destroy them next turn, or they may fall back on their artillery here. You can see H.J. Hunt's battery is on this heights uh, behind the, the wooded area uh, that we've de detected. Uh, and so he may uh, provide a, a sanctuary for the skirmishers if they decide they don't want to fight. Meanwhile, we do have this other unit, which is a new type of unit, Terry's Scouts. They're like cavalry, but they're really just scouts. They're kind of the equivalent of the sharpshooters of cavalry, except they're not good in a stand-up fight. You can't at actually attack with them. They can only defend themselves. And um, in this case, we're going to ride them forward, though, so we can get a good sense of what's coming at us uh, once we get out of this, uh, this initial uh, wooded terrain. We'll move uh, Pierre Touton Beauregard's uh, headquarters unit forward. This is another new type of unit that we didn't see in the last battle. Basically, this is a unit that gives other units around it morale and organizational bonuses based on the skill of the commander. He is the core or army commander. So he is uh, something that, uh, you know, obviously an important commander who would have a, a headquarter on the field, not in the saddle. Um, and so we deployed him into his headquarter formation. You can do the change formation point, move him out of the saddle and into the headquarters uh, location. Meanwhile, we're moving our troops all up slowly but surely, and uh, that's going to do it for turn number two. All right, so the turn starts off with the enemy bombarding one of our brigades with artillery. 35 casualties lost to that battery. It's a very powerful battery, and you can see the sharpshooters did end up pulling back. So the sharpshooters pulled back. Hunt's battalion of artillery, 179 men. They've got Napoleon smoothbores. These are very good artillery pieces. We're going to pull Holmes's uh, brigade of troops back to get out of the way of these guys. Meanwhile, we're going to send our scouts forward to see what else is out there. Nothing else detected at the moment. I'm also going to sort of consolidate my troops in this wood line. This would make a very good defensive position. There's open ground in front, but there's this wooded terrain here. So if the Union does move toward us before we're ready to advance on them, uh, we'll have very good defensive bonuses. So that is my intent. We'll move 
Corner Street forward here. Evans to the left. We'll move the other cavalry unit here. Harrison's cavalry over to the left as well to secure our left flank. While we've got Radford's cavalry on our right flank, uh, we will move... I want to move one of the weaker brigades to the right. I guess we'll move Jones' brigade over here to the right uh, to anchor our, our right flank. And then I think I'll extend my left by another hex. So we'll move uh, Wade Hampton's unit over here. Uh, this artillery will probably stay put for now. No, I don't sir. think they can attack there. Um, but we'll move this other artillery battery here of uh, six pound guns here, smoothbore six pound guns, forward to the edge of the wood line, and then uh, we'll change them into. Uh, actually, I'm going to move Shields' battery as well. Uh, we'll change them into. Uh, lim unli we'll unlimber them in the next turn. I'm also going to go ahead and mount up Bu Beauregard and move him a little bit closer to the front. J Street, thank you very much for the follow. Or, sorry, for the bits. And BYS90, thank you for the uh, follow. Alright, so we've got all that in place, and then we just need to whoops, we just need to move uh, ah, we just need to move Yule's Brigade forward, and that's the rest of our turn. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll see what the enemy does with his artillery. He attacks our cavalry. That's actually a smart thing to do. Horsemen are pretty good targets for artillery. Only 17 casualties though, because it is a smaller unit. So we attacked our cavalry, and now we're going to move our scouts forward to see what we can see. Oh shit. Um, well, we detected a bunch more Union troops. Unfortunately, we also detected Israel Richardson's Infantry Brigade, which could easily attack this cavalry unit here. 3,000 men only have Prussian muskets, but almost 4,000 men in the unit. 26 firepower. Israel Richardson, one of the best Union commanders in the early phase of the war. He was killed at Antietam, uh, but he was one of the best aggressive Union commanders. Ended up becoming a division commander before he passed. He's one of those characters that if he had survived longer, he might well have sort of built the reputation of a, of a Winfield Scott Hancock. Um, but a lot of those kind of early aggressive quality Union commanders ended up getting killed before they could really rise in high enough into the ranks to play a decisive role. Characters like Philip Kearney, Israel Richardson, those are characters that could have really changed the reputation of the Union Army's uh, generals in terms of the quality of, of soldiers that they had at their disposal. Right, we're going to move... These engineers forward. I really want to put no, a, a, a build a fortification here, a, basically a redoubt on this little rise here, and put some artillery there. I think I'm also gonna have this cavalry dismount. Cook over the right here. Bottom will move over here. Early we'll dig in. So those guys I think are pretty much done, and then we're gonna move Yule forward. And then I think that's gonna do it. So we'll go ahead and end this turn as well. Alright, so they attacked our scouts with artillery. And then they also hit Jones's brigade. So the scouts fell back after being hit with enemy artillery. It doesn't look like the Yanks are moving much of their infantry so far can see here that they've still got a bunch of troops dug in around Centerville, and they've got Richardson's Brigade up here on this heights. I really would prefer to stay on the defensive, though. So we're going to do this. These guys can't even shoot back at the enemy over there. So our scouts are doing their job over in that direction. Jones' brigade's taking some artillery, can't do much to respond. Radford would be a bad dismounted unit because he has musketoons, which are basically garbage. I think both the cavalry units have really bad weapons for dismounted troops. And then we did have some new troops that just arrived as well. It's, uh, the... First elements of Johnston's Shenandoah army coming by rail. Over 11,000 soldiers being transferred from the Shenandoah to the Bull Run Creek area via rail. One of the first major troop movements of, by rail of the war. Meanwhile, our scouts were pounded by the enemy artillery to the point where they routed. It does look like they reformed a hex away from the enemy infantry because that's great. Um, but at least all the enemy attention is on our scouts for the time being. who are pretty much toast now. Here, move this one over there. Alright, so dig in here. 
go ahead and dig in here. Long straight switch formation. We'll dig in as the reserve. No, sir. Really want to move that artillery over there. What are these guns anyway? Six pound guns, six inch howitzers. At least the other battery is a little bit better in terms of quality. Still nothing I can hit with that artillery though. Okay. Um, really a passive position for me. I'm waiting for my reinforcements to come up. It's kind of a catch-22, though, because reinforcements will also strengthen the Yanks. Uh, J-Street, I don't think the, the Prussian musket had... Uh, the range of the Springfield. The scouts keep reforming. They're like, hey, we're going to route, but then we're going to reform, then we're going to route, then we're going to reform. All right. Normally they're... Uh... All right, so we built the Abatis here. Move Long Street. It looks like he got hit by enemy artillery that turn. That's not that bad. Um, we'll move them here. Also move the artillery. Bonham will move here once we build the abatis here to the left. So woods are really good defensive positions, but elevation and abatis are better, even if they're in the open. You can't build abatis in woods, though. So it's kind of, you got to make a decision on where you want to make your stand. Okay. So Johnston is ready for here. So we'll go ahead and... We've got two core headquarters that are now available. We've got Bartow's Brigade moving forward. We've got Beckham's Artillery Battalion. Pendleton just arrived. I believe Jackson will be arriving in a turn. I guess we'll take these guys in too. And we will wait. More enemy artillery. This time they're focusing on those guns that moved into the Abatis. So Longstreet's going to dig in. The artillery is going to unlimber. I don't know if they'll be able to hit or not. Meanwhile, these guys are going to build more fortifications here. It still doesn't look like the enemy's moved. Maybe I can prod them into moving with my cavalry. Might not be a terrible idea to have our cavalry attack Hunt's artillery battalion. Also, I wouldn't mind shifting his fire away from Longstreet. So we'll do that. And then we'll move forward. They keep hitting Longstreet, huh? At least we can shoot back now. Not super effectively, but we might wear Hunt down a little bit. Whoa! Enemy infantry is moving now. How's Longstreet hanging in there? Looks like he's doing okay. I'm gonna dig in the artillery as well. These guys are going to move. Fields out of the woods and into this abatis. We're going to move Bonham forward into the abatis. I'm going to flank the enemy with my cavalry here. Or try to. Hopefully he won't attack my exposed cavalry over here on the flank. And we'll... Well, so they're moving other infantry. We can see Schneck's brigade. So it does look like they are finally moving down onto our position. Hoping we can build one more line of fortifications here. We'll anchor on the woods to the right here, and then we'll have kind of a double line here of woods and, and defenses. We'll go ahead and resupply them, dig in Johnston, and then we're going to kind of wait for the uh, reinforcements to come up. Move Barto to the left, swing this artillery forward. And now we've got some additional reserves coming forward here. So we've got LZ, LZ's brigade. We've got B's Brigade, the famous, look at there, stands Jackson, stand like a stone wall. And we've got Thomas Jackson himself. So three more brigades of good troops coming up. Let's see what happens. All right, so they're focusing their artillery against our cavalry, and their infantry does move accordingly. So huge casualties suffered by our um, cavalry. Enemy infantry did charge, or did attack them. 
and my cavalry can't really do anything against it. So we're just going to kind of keep riding up this way, scouting out the enemy. They are fully in motion. So they are moving strongly against us. We're going to go ahead and pull back Harrison's brigade. Basically, he was wrecked. Lost almost half his strength being attacked by Richardson. Uh, you know, these guys are going to dig in here. This artillery forward. Oh, shit, I can't change them over yet. This artillery is going to focus on... The Iron Brigade has 87 firepower. They've got... W.T. Sherman is their commander, and they've got 87 firepower. They've got 1861 Springfields. So we're going to hit them with artillery while they're in column formation. So they're in long, long column formations. Which means we can go ahead and hit them, inflict 11 losses on their firepower, cut it by more than an eighth, and uh, or almost an eighth, and uh, some substantial casualties as well. This artillery is moving forward here, so I'm going to move them left. Um, the new troops are coming up as well. I may have missed them for a turn. I may have forgotten to move them for a turn. Okay, we also have Stuart's Cavalry Brigade, which has arrived. I may need to shift one brigade over here to the right to kind of refuse our position a bit. To prevent us from getting easily flanked. Doesn't look like I can dig these guys in. Oh, I already moved them. That's okay. Right. Let's see what happens here. Hopefully they don't have, they don't bombard our limbered up artillery. And they don't. They actually bombard Cox Brigade there on the right. Alright, that turn worked out about as good as we could hope there. They didn't try to hit our artillery, which was limbered up and kind of a sitting duck. They also didn't go after Longstreet. We're going to go with our artillery against Sherman again because he's the biggest threat. And we did another 11 firepower damage, 88 more casualties. It's just such a huge brigade. It's basically like when you shoot at it, you can't miss. So we're going to move these engineers out of the way. I think we're going to move early into that new defensive position. So again, we're just building an engineer, an engineer built fortified line. That should really help us, right? That's the hope, anyway. You know, all these scouts over here. I kind of forgot about my artillery over here to the right flank. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and go after Tibble's battalion of artillery and boom sharpshooters here with our cavalry. We've got seven firepower. We can charge these guys. The attacking general was killed by a lucky shot. Defensive volley was too much. Great. So basically, they just raked us with canister fire. So we did very little damage to Boone or Tibble. That failed. So I'm getting my cavalry wrecked. But it is what it is. The reserves are on the way. I think these might be our last reinforcements too. Not sure. We make it something much later. In any event, we'll have to go ahead and... Uh, this turn, I think. We want to switch these guys back into dig in mode so they can build the. extend the fortifications one more hex. Alright, so they focused their artillery and our cavalry. And actually, pull some infantry back. We'll counter battery them a little bit. Sharpshooters at our cavalry. And they're not attacking our positions. That's interesting. Right, so we're going to pull back. Got a good look at their troops here. The scouts are almost recovered, so that's good. We're going to dig in with this artillery. And then these guns are going to fire against Sherman. Again, we caught the Iron Brigade in column formation. Another 11 firepower and 81 more casualties. These guys are just getting butchered by, enemy or by, by our artillery. We'll go ahead and build uh, another defensive position here. And we can extend our line again. Meanwhile, Early can dig in. And all of our infantry here in fortifications are in good shape. The scouts survived. Barely. So I think I want to move these guys to the right a little bit. Maybe put them in the woods there. These guns. Meanwhile, I, 
going to put most of our reserves over on the right flank because it's the only place that the enemy seems to be feeling us out. So we're going to switch this whole division. We're going to go cross lots, move them across the open fields. At ease, man. At ease, man. At ease, man. At ease, man. Okay. Longstreet, meanwhile, is really... I mean, Longstreet is the equivalent of our Iron Brigade here. Shield's already moved, or dug in, so yeah, we'll go ahead and end that turn, I think. Yeah. Anybody left that didn't move? No, everybody moved. Okay. Let's see what they do now. They're gonna bombard Longstreet, they're gonna go for counter battery. And they're moving forward again. Okay, so general Union attack may be about to occur. They brought in four brigades all along our front. Iron Brigade is still the deadliest of them. We are going to continue to hit it with artillery. And do some pretty big damage against it. We're going to... Debating... Well, this artillery is already dug in, actually, so we can go ahead and fire that without concern. And then these guys are going to dig in. And while I'm going to move these engineers back, and we're going to move Hampton's Brigade into these newly built fortifications. Meanwhile, we're going to move B, LZ, and Jackson over here to the right to extend our line. Maybe even to flank the enemy. Bring this cavalry brigade back. I'm going to swing these scouts north now that they're ready to ride again. And I think... We've just got the one battery of artillery left. I don't like that these... Our, these artillery pieces are going to essentially be limbered up if the enemy comes at us, but... Extend our line a little bit with Holmes as well. Alright, let's... see what happens. More artillery bombardment against helpless guns. Are they pulling back again? Really? It's just going to be an artillery duel, and they're going to come forward, and then they're going to realize, oh, I don't want to attack there. And then they're going to pull back, and then we're going to play the whole damn game again. All right, let's go after these, this, this brigade of infantry with their uh, column formation. Three units of artillery all hammer them. This battery switches in to... Wheels into battery, if you will. And then I think we're gonna try and move these guys here to extend the line. I'd like to sweep up and around Richardson and surround him. I'd also like to try and sweep up and around the Iron Brigade and deal them a bit of a blow. So for now, Hampton will dig in. Actually, I wouldn't mind moving these engineers up and over if we could do that. It's a very 1864 strategy to just be like, we're moving and we're digging in right away, because that kind of stuff didn't really happen at this phase of the war. But Yeah, if they're going to be passive, I may try and take some opportunities to uh, take advantage of that. We'll see if they actually ever attack our line. Oh, okay, well, they just attacked. Except in this case, the attacking general was immediately wounded and carried to the field hospital. His replacement was sent up at the double quick. So that was a very good first defense there. Red Robin, thank you, by the way, for the follow. A very good first defense here. 213 attacking casualties. Uh, Jandrail Yun, thank you for the follow as well. 213 attacking casualties, 61 defenders. So that was a good ratio for us there. I may need to let Latham's battery chill for a bit. Could use a little bit of time to recover. All right, we're gonna try and route the Iron Brigade because they've got really good weapons that we get a whole bunch of money if we route them. So we charge the Iron Brigade and drive them back at least. When 
while we're moving our scouts into the rear to see what's going on. I think the Iron Brigade's probably wrecked. Move Bartow Fort as well. So our left is a little bit exposed. Kind of makes me think we should charge it early against Keys as well. We had a nearly three, well, better than three to one firepower advantage there. So huge uh, casualties for the enemy. We drove the enemy back with relative ease. Bonham's brigade's just going to... I'm actually going to have him charge Schneck's iron brigade. Now we're going to get a warning saying if you don't take this position, your men will rout. So the whole brigade would rout. But here's the thing. They're not going to withstand that. And we might rout them. Yes, we did. All right. So these guys are running out of control. Successful attack there. 1,400 supply captured. A lot of weapons cost captured as well. And then we'll just move Longstreet Fort onto the attack as well. Driving back the enemy skirmishers. Although it looks like we actually suffered more losses in that case. How did Elsie's Brigade lose so much cohesion? Right, so Jones is going to attack these guys. Driving them back. Hundred and thirty nine casualties inflicted there. Wow. All right, we will see what to expect here. I'm not quite sure what the Union's going to do with that full blown attack we just launched, that general attack. We're still trying to rest up some of our cavalry. Stuart's a bit exposed. We'll see what happens here. We kind of are double enveloping the enemy line. But that couldn't last. We knew that the cavalry was pretty exposed, so they counterattacked and drove the cavalry back. It looks like Richardson has extracted his brigade as well. Meanwhile, the Union goes on the offensive here on the left flank. Pretty successful attack there for them. drove this brigade back. I love the charge command. It's risky. You can very rapidly wreck your forces with ill-advised attacks. Stewart's brigade got wrecked. Cavalry does not stand up well to enemy infantry. Tis the lesson of war, my lads. Alright, so... Let's see if we can route keys with artillery. We won't do as much casualty-wise, but morale-wise we might be able to Drive them back. We did. All right, so we routed Key's Brigade. So that's two Union Brigades, at least temporary. Oh, well, currently routed. Should help with the morale. Charge Burnside's Brigade here. We didn't drive them back. 704 casualties for Bonham's Brigade. Granted, they inflicted a lot too, but yikes. All right, early, finish the deal. Drive Burnside back. Success. All right, so Burnside is driven back. His brigade is in rough shape. But there's some really good brigades here on the right flank for the Union, so we're actually going to pull some of our troops back here. Longstreet's going to have to dig in in a bit of a forward position because the artillery is blocking his way back to the guns. Hampton's going to hang out here mainly so Bartow's not alone. And then we're going to form a new defensive position in this direction. So we attacked, we drove them back, we bloodied their nose. And now we're immediately going to fall back on our defensive positions and hope that we can bait them into an attack. Their artillery is so goddamn murderous. 
Hurley's brigade attack by Richardson there. The attackers actually lost worse in the first attack, but the Union massed and launched a second one. They got the edge in the second attack. So Early held his position, and because he was attacked multiple times in this position and held on, it becomes a victory point, but we have to evacuate it because we can't hold that exposed a position. You know, we'll pull Stewart back, Longstreet back, Bonham back, Hampton back. Alright, so we basically withdrew all along the front. We'll dig these guys in into these fortifications here. These guys might just be tired because they've been marching forever. At ease, man. Yule is still in good shape. Porter's brigade needs to be cut down to size a little bit. He's too powerful. Nice. All right, so we did some damage to Porter there. Okay. Oh shit, undo that. All right, we'll end the turn, we'll see what happens here. No, oh, can we counter battery? We can. Oh, I forgot about my scout way up there. All right, so Franklin's Brigade just attacked Holmes. Franklin's Brigade has less firepower and attacking a dug-in defender. No bayonet charge there. You can see the casualties heavily favor us. Defender. I mean, they want to keep shooting their artillery at our scouts. That's fine with me. That unit really doesn't mean much. Right, meanwhile, Longstreet dig in. You're gonna just keep. Oh, you can't withdraw? Really? Huh. I guess we'll dig you in then. At ease, man. I don't like the idea of leaving early out there, hanging them out to dry. Continue focusing on Porter because he's the biggest threat to our line. And all of our artillery can pretty much focus on him too, so we stand a slight chance of breaking him up. Exposed in the air, whatever you want to say. The flank is in the air a bit. I, I meant more that I don't want Early's flanks are not in the air. He's exposed, though, because he's in really rough shape and he's in open ground. That's more what I meant. Meanwhile, we've got these three brigades over here on the right that are just waiting for an opportunity to crash into the Federal flank if they advance, as I think they may. So we'll go ahead and move through this turn. Nope, they pull back there. This forward and back of the AI, it's basically like the AI gets that moves forward for the attack because it sees us. Then when it's ready for the attack, it realizes we've got entrenchments, and it doesn't want to do that. And so that it, then it makes the decision, I probably shouldn't attack here, and it pulls back. So that seems to be the effect that our uh, fortifications are having. Meanwhile, an artillery duel certainly does not favor us. Let's go ahead and smash Blanker with some artillery. Where I can, anyway. I think I'm going to attack him. I mean, that's a pretty devastating barrage there. Okay, so Longstreet attacks him successfully, inflicts heavy, heavy casualties on him. No, sir. Then Hampton follows it up. will finish the deal and rout him? Yes, he will! The enemy will rout. Now, 
Evans is is not a good brigade to just have sitting out there. Go for how? No, sir. Wait, will they charge? They will. Okay. Ooh, that was a rough one. Lost a good deal of men. Jones followed up and drive Howard back. There you go. I've just decided, like, willy nilly, without even really planning to. I just kind of got, I got my blood up and I just started attacking everything in sight. Willfully taking excessive casualties here. The third time wasn't the charm! Damn it, we didn't break him. Wilcox hung in there. Maybe not versus Harrison? Harrison's cavalry can't do the deal either. <sighs> Stewart's too beat up. All right, another attack will probably fall back in a turn or two. Looks like the feds are falling back. It is nighttime now, just all of a sudden, without any warning, the sun set on the battlefield. Alright. Oh, you get rested up. Daddy. Your unit is in rough shape. The engineer is also working all day. Daddy's, man. The artillery definitely needs the night off, too. Especially Latham's uh, battery. Cavalry also. Very bad. Alright, so for the rest, we're just going to leave them all kind of in position. If you move units around at night, you can move units at night. But if you don't rest them in the night, then they get huge penalties. From their organization, their morale, all these other things. Basically simulating forced marches through the night. So the night kind of hurries. Most of the turns are 30 minute turns, but the night phase does kind of rush through. Um, all right, so now that it's morning, we're gonna pull the troops no, back. Okay, he's gonna go over here. Long Street will dig in, we'll dig in. Pull back, we'll move Botham in there. We'll move these guys to the north just to get out of the way. Would have been nice to put a, a Betus here on this objective. Dulzy will fall back. Oh, I forgot about Radford's cavalry. They're like, hey guys, we took the last half day off. We're good. We're ready for war. Most of these troops are ready, but I'm going to give the artillery more time off. So let's go ahead and see what happens. So they move right in and attack B's brigade there. They lose that attack, but only slightly. Wow, counter battery is very effective there. I think that's because they had infantry and column formation. Meanwhile, those guys couldn't do anything. They just had to sit and take it. Oh! Davies attack Evans' brigade in column formation. Rough. And they moved over there and attacked our cavalry again. Can you, like, lay off the cavalry? The horsemen actually gave a good account of themselves in that battle. Fortunately, it wasn't a very strong enemy brigade. Alright, so what are we going to do now? Let's go for Richardson. Let's try and wreck him. To do that, we should probably also wreck the flanks around him. So Richardson gets beat up pretty bad, but we also should go for Tompkins. Okay. 
No, the game froze. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, I have had some issues with this game freezing from time to time on me, usually every 30 or 40 minutes or so. I thought I had them fixed when I was recording this, but obviously not. The good thing is where it froze, the autosave basically picked up right from where it left off. Um, I think I might go back like two moves, but still in the same turn. Um, so we will pick this up again in a follow-on video, but at least for tonight's episode, that's going to do it. I do hope you guys enjoyed uh, this episode. I do hope you enjoyed the stream. Leave your thoughts as always, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.